All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about who gets paid in a nonprofit. Let's talk about it. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss in the Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help, make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I drop videos every week. And this is kind of like a nonprofit 101. This is for people who are thinking about starting a nonprofit who really don't understand the nonprofit industry at, at all and really need help figuring out like how do you get paid? Like what do you do? Like who's supposed to get paid, all right? I do have videos that talk about like the nitty gritty of it, like how do you approach it? What do you do? So I'm linking one above that talks about how to get paid as a nonprofit founder. So make sure you check that one out. But I'm just gonna do like an overview today. So first I'm gonna talk about um, the difference between staff and board and who gets paid and who does not. And then I'm gonna just talk about different levels of staff that you may have that need to get paid for your organization as a way for you to think about like how to divide up the personnel in your organization once you get to that point where you're making money to be able to pay staff. And then at the end of the video, I'm just gonna share like if you're looking to hire staff, who you should think about hiring first. Like what are the really important positions that will pay off the most, all right? Let's get into it. All right, so first the difference between staff and board. People get confused by that because they think that if people serve on the board, they should be getting paid. Typically in a nonprofit setup, your board members are volunteer and they don't get paid. There are some nonprofits where boards get paid, but those situations are rare. And I talked about these situations in the video I'm linking above, which talks about do board members get paid. In most typical situations, board members do not get paid. So if you are a founder and you're watching this and saying, well, I serve on my board and I absolutely plan to get paid by my nonprofit, what does that mean? then what happens is you then transition to become a staff member. And as a staff member, you get paid a salary. Just keep in mind like the purpose of a nonprofit. The purpose of a nonprofit is not to generate profit for you as a founder. That's not the purpose. Like as a business, that may be the purpose, but you're not a for-profit business, you're a nonprofit. So you don't stand to benefit as a shareholder or anything like that in the corporation. You only get paid based on compensation for work that you do. Okay, so just keep that in mind that for people who get paid in a nonprofit, they are designated as staff. Now, staff may be your executive director and then people all the way down. So let's talk about like what are the different levels of staff? Like who are those people that would get paid? So I thought the best way to kind of organize this video is just talk about those different levels. All right. So the first level is like the executive level. So those are the people who are making the strategic decisions and helping to implement the organization's strategic strategic plan kind of at the highest level for the staff. So that would be your executive director. It could be your chief financial officer. It could be your chief operations officer, right? Your COO, CEO, all those people, right? So they they are the top people who are making executive decisions, right? So they are kind of the the layer that engages the most with the board. The board in its normal sense is supposed to be more hands-off. They set the long-term vision and strategy for the organization and they work with the executive level staff to kind of make sure that it's being implemented well, right? So that's the executive level, okay? Now, as a nonprofit founder, you're typically the executive director who's over, you're like the chief staff person in the organization. So you're over everyone, but especially working with and directing that executive level. Another level you wanna think about is your admin level, and they are the people who kind of support the infrastructure of the organization. So in terms of your HR, your finances, your accounting, maybe facilities if you have a building, stuff like that. They handle all of that stuff that the organization needs to run. So in my budget video, I talked about admin costs and overhead costs. Those are people who are typically incurring those costs, right? Those are things, no matter what you're doing as an organization, it doesn't matter what programming you have, those things need to exist. Right? You need to have an HR function. You need to have an accounting function. So administration is just making sure that the infrastructure of the organization is set and it's solid. The next level of staff you may want to think about, and I also just want to keep in mind that it may seem like I'm going like in order hierarchical, but I know some people may not want that structure. They may want more of a flat structure. So I'm just providing like examples of different levels of different types 
of staff that you would pay. But you may think about everyone kind of being at similar levels. So don't think that I'm just doing things in a, high, in a certain hierarchy, all right? So the next level I'm gonna talk about is the programming staff. Those are people who are working directly with your clients and implementing programs. So as an organization, you may have more than one program that you're implementing. You may have one, you may have five. But all the people who are implementing those things and getting the work done with your participants or carrying out your mission, those are the people who are the most public facing, right? They deal with the nitty gritty of the work every day, right? So those are program staff. Those staff are way more likely to be financed by grant funding, right? Because they're directly related to program costs than your admin staff who are a little bit more kind of hands off. They still are needed to make sure the program runs, but they handle like admin and overhead costs. So grant funding, if you're looking to pay for staff, usually will only pay for program staff if you're even allowed to pay staff salaries at all. The last level of staff is like your support staff. Um, some people may also call this admin staff as well, but support staff are people who kind of support the people in certain positions, right? So they're there to support program staff. They're there to support the executive level staff or the admin staff and carrying out their functions, right? So they are kind of the foundation of the organization, right? So they make sure things are done and make sure that people have what they need to be able to carry out their job functions, right? And so you can think about like these different levels when you're trying to figure out how do you wanna organize your staff, what your organizational chart will look like. So I also talked about like in the beginning of the video, who I would recommend you should start with first. Like if you're looking to hire and you're trying to figure out who should we hire first, this is what I recommend. I think an executive director is essential because you need someone to kind of direct and carry out the strategic plan, right, of the organization. And that person is the lead, is the face of the organization. So if it makes sense for you to hire the executive director first, that needs to be that person or at least one of the first people. So I'm also like, it's a given that if you're doing direct programming, you need program staff first to get the work done. Those staff sometimes are easier to fund because grant funding can cover them and they're more related to the work. So it's easier, kind of an easier sale to finance those staff positions. I'm talking about other positions beyond programming. So the second position you should think about is a development person or a fundraising person. So the work that this person would put in the ROI, like the return on the effort that they put in in particular, will be way more than someone else. If you have someone dedicated to bringing in resources to the organization, they are worth their weight in gold because that's how you're going to survive. Like your ability to hire, your ability to expand, your ability to build your reach is based on your financial resources, honestly. And if you have somebody dedicated to do that, then you're way more likely like to be successful and to be able to carry out your strategic plan. So if you're thinking about, okay, who should we focus on? Who should we pay attention to? Absolutely a fundraising person you should be thinking about. Now there are other positions that are just as important. So please don't think I'm saying the other positions aren't important, but you may be able to get away with like contract positions or part-time and things like that. When you're ready to get really serious about like, full-time positions and you have the opportunity to do that, I really recommend you think about those two positions in particular beyond just the program staff. So I hope that video was helpful. If you need more help planning like the first year of your nonprofit, including like how to build your budget, how to build your strategic plan, then make sure you check out my nonprofit startup workbook. I have linked it below. If you need any more help, make sure you visit me at www.bostonabudget.com and I will see you in the next video.